Hello and welcome to another thought for the day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. Let's pray as we come to God's word this morning. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can draw near. We thank you that we can begin each day and every day knowing your presence with us. And this thrilling truth is ours because of all that you have done for us in Jesus, your son. In his death on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, his ministry even now seated at your right hand with us on his mind and his heart praying for us as we proceed through this day. So hear our prayer and open your word to us now. We ask in his name and for his sake. Amen. Well, we're reading Joshua chapter 20 this morning. We're looking at uh, the whole chapter, but I've chosen to read verses 1 to 6 and verse 9. So Joshua chapter 20, verses 1 to 6, and then on to verse 9. 9. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Tell the Israelites to de designate the cities of refuge as I instructed you through Moses, so that anyone who kills a person accidentally and unintentionally may flee there, and find protection from the avenger of blood. When they flee to one of these cities, they are to stand in the entrance of the city gate and state their case before the elders of that city. Then the elders are to admit the fugitive into their city and provide a place to live among them. If the avenger of blood comes in pursuit, the elders must not surrender the fugitive because the fugitive killed their neighbor unintentionally and without malice aforethought. They are to stay in that city until they have stood trial before the assembly and until the death of the high priest who is serving at that time. Then they may go back to their own home, home in the town from which they fled. And then verse 9. Any of the Israelites or any foreigner residing among them who killed someone accidentally could flee to these designated cities and not be killed by the avenger of blood prior to standing trial before the assembly. <clears throat> so here it is, we have this uh, seemingly rather strange to us sound of these special cities that were set apart, six of them, throughout the land of Israel to deal with this business of unintentional killing. And you might recognise that phrase that occurs in those first few verses, the phrase without malice aforethought, because indeed that phrase has found its through into and is the basis of some of our law. So the legal definition of malice aforethought is this, the predetermination or premeditation to do an unlawful act, especially to kill or seriously injure, the intent with which an unlawful killing is effected which must be proved for the crime to constitute murder. So if there was intention with malice aforethought planned out before the action took place, that is murder. But if not, we would designate it manslaughter. And the penalty for the latter is less than the penalty from the former. Well, there was another action in play here in the land of Israel. When someone was killed by accident by someone else, the next male relative of the victim had the right to become the avenger of blood. In other words, they could avenge the blood of the slain person by taking the life of the killer. And they could chase them and hunt them down and do this without any further intervention from the governing powers. So that was the ruling. Now, there was a release of that stipulation in these six cities of refuge. So what these are, are sanct sanctuaries for the person who has done the killing. And if they saw that they were in this position, they could run to these cities and plead their case before the elders of the city. And they would be admitted to the city, given a place to live until the case could be heard by the assembly 
and then they could stay there without penalty and the avenger of blood could not come and ask that the killer be delivered up to them the elders could not deliver the guilty party up to them but they were allowed to stay there under the protection of the city until the death of the current high priest all of which seems rather convoluted this was the law of moses that moses had given previously if you want the reference for that uh, you can read in numbers 35 uh, furthermore uh, the avenger of blood the hebrew word is goel g-o-e-l and there's a lot of fascinating material out there uh, about this the word is actually related to the word redeem and there is this redemption quality of the blood of the deceased in avenging that killing by taking the life of the perpetrator now why would this be in place well sometimes when we criticize levitical law and there are many who would look at those uh, kind of commandments that Moses gave for the social life of Israel and say these were harsh uh, these were imposing uh, for example the laws on on rape and uh, the severe laws that took uh, demanded the penalty of, of the loss of life of those who are the guilty party and these are considered by many to be over harsh and this is a cruel God who's doing these things what people like that don't do is they don't compare the law of Israel to the law of Egypt where they had just come from was slavery in Egypt where there was mass uh, overruling of the sanctity of life and what these commandments do in the grace of God is preserve the sanctity of life and also the rights of the individual to ownership to possession the rights of women etc so by comparison to what was happening in Egypt whose laws they were not to take into the land of Israel God gives them a suite of laws that reflect his mercy and his grace so what this one does it prevents vendetta there cannot be interfamily feuds caused by the accidental killing of one of their members and we've seen that is rife in the mafia lands uh, if, if you like those kind of stories you see where one family feuds with another and it goes down through the generations because of some act that has occurred in the history and on it goes life taken for life and then revenge being taken against uh, the, the one who did that and so on backwards and forwards this restricts that to one-on-one -on -one. so it's actually a law of mercy uh, and secondly we see it's a law of, of uh, concession to those who have accidentally taken life we're not talking about deliberate murder here there was a penalty for that and the penalty was death and we we're seeing that what's happening here is that the sanctity of life itself is being preserved so uh, what the Israelites are being told is that the loss of life at the hands of another is a serious business and even if it's accidental it must be taken into account so uh, the idea here is so don't do it make sure that you protect by your action against taking the life or causing serious injury to another so there, there is this maintenance principle within the society of Israel which actually puts a safeguard on life and in our day we must see this as coming right the way through into the new covenant and when we consider uh, things like abortion what we're what we're looking at there and what, what appalls us so greatly uh, is that this is actually the deliberate taking of life life in the womb and there is no way that the scripture countenances that so those two things the preservation of life and the uh, the mercy extended to those who may be the guilty party those two things we preserve but there's a third thing and the third thing is that this points us to Christ this idea of refuge for the guilty and uh, we recall to mind the the words of the hymn uh, how firm a foundation where the verse goes on uh, about you who unto Jesus for refuge have fled what's that mean it means that you are guilty you deserve judgment you deserve the penalty that your sin has incurred and what God has done is he's pl uh, granted for you this place of refuge which is in Christ where you can run into him and you can avoid the judgment of God and we know that that happens because that judgment was poured out upon our Savior upon Jesus Christ on the cross 
If you want to look at the principles involved for the dealing with uh, those who sin against us in the new covenant, you need to turn to Romans chapter 12 and the end of that chapter where Paul says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. And then he goes on in verse 19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Don't you do it. I will repay. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. So in the new covenant, we're not living in a land which God has given us. We're not uh, living according to the social law he has imposed upon us, which is to be our cultural climb. We are living under the grace of Jesus and those things point us to that truth in the new covenant. Just close with a beautiful quote from somebody called David Wurzel. This is from uh, a, a website called Days of Praise, which is a daily devotional run from the Institute of Creation Research. Let me quote this in full because it's so lovely. This, these cities of refuge he's talking about, this is a beautiful picture of the road to Christ Jesus. It is a road so hard that no self-righteous man can ever tread it, but so easy that every sinner who knows himself to be a sinner may, may by it find his way to heaven like the ancient manslayer we are under condemnation for our sins the avenger of blood is swift of foot and upon our heels if any today is outside the refuge of christ let him run with all speed to him for salvation that we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us so there it is, the picture of Christ, the city of refuge for our souls, when we, the guilty sinners, incurring the judgment of God, righteously so, run to him and we're delivered from judgment and from penalty. There is now no condemnation for you who are in Christ Jesus. You are free in him from the judgment of God. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, how we praise you for that freedom. How we praise you that we need not fear death, for we look to a glorious eternal hope of salvation, one for us in the person of the Son, ours forever in his blood and by his cross. Help us to walk in the light of that joy today. In his name we pray. Amen. <laughs>